Thessalonians chapter 4, a very familiar portion of scriptures, one I believe is about ready to be a fulfill, fulfilled portion of scriptures. Thessalonians chapter 4, we'll begin reading verse 13, the Bible says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and, the trump of God, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We are so grateful for the grace of God. Lord, we are so thankful for the goodness of God. And we're so thankful for the greatness of God. And Lord, we're thankful you're our God. Now Lord, I come to you today asking that you would certainly help your people. Lord, they live in this old wicked world, have to contend with the flesh and the, the devil. So God, I pray that Lord, that blessed hope that abides within all of your children would come alive in our hearts today. God, I certainly do pray, Lord, if there be any amongst us today who are strangers to the grace of God, that, Lord, you would speak to their hearts. And, Lord, through cords of love, I pray they'd believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Now, Father, you know our down sitting, our uprising, the number of hairs on our head. You know our, our everything about us. And, God, you know what we stand in need of today. So help us today to leave different than we came. Help us today to leave with a burden for those that do not know you. Help us today, O oh Father, to be all that we can be for Christ. Now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Lord, touch those that are sick and those that are providentially hindered. Glorify your namesake. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. In these verses, I want you to notice, first of all, a controversy. In verse number 13, the Bible says, But I would not have you to be ignorant brethren. Now, he's not calling them ignorant brethren. He is telling them, I want you to make certain you know, you're learned on a matter. Amen. Ignorant just means unlearned. Right. And he said, I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. There was a sect of the Jews, a religious sect, called the Sadducees. And the Sadducees believed in no resurrection from the dead. They believed when a soul died, just like a dog or, heaven forbid, a cat dies, they have no hope. That's it. The grave's the fi finality of it all. Matter of fact, in Matthew 22 and 23, the same day, came to him, the Lord Jesus, the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection. Those people have no hope. Folks that believe you just die and cease to exist have no hope. I'm glad I have hope beyond the grave. Uh, I'm glad because my Savior is alive, I'll be alive forevermore. Uh, what a blessing to have that blessed hope. Uh, but can I say, most people that you see in society, most people uh, that you see in the community, most people that you see uh, on the workplace uh, or at the schoolhouse, uh, they do not have the hope of eternal life. Uh, we see the controversy, but then notice the clarification. Look in verse 14. The Bible says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. 
Now the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinthians, uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, we know those that die in Christ, uh, their bodies laid to rest, uh, but their soul goes on to be with the Lord. Uh, and Paul is clarifying what has happened. Uh, yes, that thing that's in the grave, uh, that's dead. Uh, but the soul of the man or the soul of the woman uh, that was in Christ is with the Lord. Uh, what a blessing to have that hope. Uh, and he goes on to say that when the Lord comes, uh, he's going to bring them with him. Uh, and in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, he's going to raise that corruptible body and reunite it with that soul and in a moment and an instant uh, uh, they're going to get a glorified body just like Christ. He clarifies all that. Uh, what a blessing to have that hope. Uh, what a blessing to know that our loved ones that died in Christ are with the Lord. What a privilege to know that. Uh, what a blessing to know that. Now, I don't have time to get into it but under the Old Testament economy when people died, they stayed in either Abraham's bosom in paradise or they went to uh, the grave called hell. There was a great gulf between them. We see that in Luke 16. The rich man died and went to hell. Lazarus the beggar uh, was found in Abraham's bosom. And we've seen that uh, the rich man wanted Abraham just to uh, let uh, uh, Lazarus come with just a, a drop of water to cool his tongue because he was tormented in the flame. We see that uh, he could not because there was a great gulf. And then he said, well, send him to my brethren so they do not come to this awful place. Uh, can I say that those that are in hell today uh, would be soul winners if they were let out? They'd tell everybody, don't die and go to hell. Mm -hmm. But you see, they were there in Abraham's bosom until the Lord Jesus died, was buried, and, and rose again. But he went to the lower parts of the earth. And Ephesians 4 said he led captivity captive. He went down in there. See, those Old Testament saints couldn't go to heaven because they had to be saved by the same blood of the Lamb that you and I had to be saved by. Yeah. And Jesus preached unto them. They all accepted it. He led captivity captive. And he took them on to glory. Yeah. And ever since then, there is no paradise. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. We see a controversy. We see the clarification. Notice the coming of Christ in verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of our archangel, with the trump of God. What a blessing, huh? We see the Lord is coming. And then notice the change. It says in verse 16, The dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Huh? What a blessing we're going to be changed one day. What a day when this corruption is going to put on incorruption. Uh, what a blessed day. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the glorified body. Hmm? Uh, now, I'll say this. If there's no transformation in this life, there'll be no translation for that life. You'll not be caught away. Hmm? Uh, listen, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a preacher. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. If you're not in Christ, you're not going when the trump sounds. Hmm? Uh, now notice the comfort, verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. If talking about the Lord coming makes you uncomfortable, that means you got something wrong. If talking about Jesus coming troubles you, that means you're either not saved or you're saved and you're not living like you should. And you're not ready for him to come. Hmm? Paul tells us to comfort one another with the words that Jesus is coming. Hmm? John said in Revelation 22, Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But I've been around some people, you talk about the Lord coming, they get a little nervous. Hmm? That's telling on yourself. The Bible said it ought to be a comfort to know we have a blessed hope. What is that hope? That Jesus is coming uh, and going to take his church out of this world. Uh, now, nowhere in here do we find the term rapture. But what it is is the catching away of the saints or the translation of the saints. It's going to be an Enoch experience. We was and we was not. No? Now let me say, 
I got to say it. It's not part of the message, but I got to say it, Brother Thad. This is not the second coming of the Lord Jesus. Jesus does not come back to the earth. The saints rise to meet him in the air. No, but we are coming back with him in Revelation 19, and he's going to land on the earth. That's his second coming. The Jews are looking for his coming. Uh, unfortunately, they don't know him as, as the Messiah uh, now. They don't know him as Savior. Uh, they're looking for him to come and take over. Uh, they need to look for him to change their life. Uh, so when he does take over, they'll be a part of it. Hmm. I want to preach with God's help this morning on this thought. I want to preach on Jesus is coming soon. Uh, hey, can I say the scriptures promise it. The Bible says this, Know also the last days perilous times shall come. Goes on a list of much things going to happen that are happening. Hmm? Uh, the scriptures promise that is coming is soon. Can I say this? Society is promoting it. Society is promoting that he's coming soon. Look around what's going on in this old world. Uh, look at what's going on with the Jews. Uh, look at how many nations are rising up for the terrorists and are against the Jews. Uh, do you realize that when Jesus comes back literally to this earth, uh, all nations will turn against Israel. Uh, all nations will be at war with Israel. Uh, can I say uh, he's taken his church out seven years before he literally comes back? Uh, friend, if they're already lining up against Israel, uh, how close is his coming? He's coming soon. Uh, can I say he said, uh, as it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Uh, what happened in the days of Noah? Man's uh, imaginations and thoughts were evil continually. Uh, friend, look how evil and wicked this whole world's got. Uh, uh, they're calling that which is good evil and that which is good uh, evil good uh, we're living in a wicked day a wicked society uh, they're trying to change the use of a woman and the use of a man uh, go read Romans chapter 1 that would be happening it's happening uh, I'm just telling you uh, uh, the scriptures promise is coming as soon uh, hey, the society is promoting is coming soon uh, Jesus is coming soon friend uh, you better be looking for him uh, can I say the saints are praying for it? Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I've had about all I can have in this old world. Uh, hey, uh, as Brother Phil says, I'm heaven bound with the hammer down. Uh, even so, come Lord Jesus. Uh, Jesus is coming soon. Can I say the rapture will be accompanied with the deified one? Look again, if you will, in verse 16. The Bible says, for the Lord himself. God's not sending an angel for us. God's not sending one of the apostles for us. God's not sending one of the patriarchs for us. God's not sending one of the four and twenty elders. He's not sending one of those uh, uh, special angels, archangels, or any other kind of angel. Uh, uh, the Lord himself uh, is coming for us. Uh, he said in John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. Uh, if you believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, in my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again uh, and receive you unto myself. I said the Lord himself is coming. Hey, he's the Almighty One. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's our advocate. He's the anchor of our soul. Hey, he's the one who's altogether lovely. He's the Ancient of Days. He's the Amen himself. And the Deified One. The Lord Jesus Christ himself uh, is coming for us. Uh, he's coming soon. Uh, can I say the deified one? Uh, he's coming. Uh, hey, the rapture uh, is also going to be accompanied uh, with the descent. Uh, look what it says in verse 16. Uh, the Lord himself shall descend uh, from heaven. Uh, in Acts chapter number 1, uh, verse number uh, 8 uh, 
He gave the last thing, the last command to his apostles. Uh, he said, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Uh, ye shall be witnesses unto me uh, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other most parts of the world. Uh, and then in verse number 9, uh, it said that when he had spoken these things, uh, while they beheld, he was taken up, uh, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Uh, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, uh, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, uh, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, uh, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Uh, this same Jesus, uh, which is taken up from you into heaven, uh, so uh, shall so come in like manner as his seen him go into heaven. Uh, hey, he ascended up, uh, and he's descending down. Uh, he's uh, coming down, uh, and he's uh, coming soon. Uh, He's going to get up off his throne. Uh, he's going to step out on the cloud. Uh, hey, what a blessing to know. Uh, he's a coming and I'm a going. Hallelujah. Uh, he's coming soon. Uh, are you ready to meet him? He's coming soon. Uh, the rapture will be accompanied with the deified one. It'll be accompanied with the descent. Uh, but it's also going to be accompanied with the disturbance. Look again in verse 16. Look what the Bible says. Uh, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Hmm. Uh, he's not coming quietly. You know, this world which all us Christians would just go away quietly. Ain't happening. Uh, he's coming with a shout. It'll be a disturbance. Huh? Can I say this shout is a cry? Can I say this shout will be a chorus? Huh? Can I say this shout will be a call? Hallelujah. Huh? The Bible says in Revelation 4.1, uh, And after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, uh, and the first voice which I heard uh, was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, uh, which said, Come up hither, uh, and I will show thee these things which must be hereafter. Uh, listening, uh, I don't know what he's going to shout. Uh, I don't know what he's going to cry. Uh, I don't know what chorus will be singing. Uh, I don't know what will be a call. Uh, but it's going to be something like, Come up hither. Uh, and I'm glad when he calls me. Uh, I'm a going. Uh, I'm going to answer the call. Uh, I'll not miss that call. Hallelujah. Uh, it's going to be a disturbance. It's going to be a shout. Can I say it's going to be a summons? It's going to be a convoking or an assembling uh, of the bride of Christ. Uh, uh, what a blessing. Uh, I'm glad I'm going to a wedding, aren't you? Hallelujah. Uh, not only going to be a shout and a summons, uh, but it's going to be selective. Y'all remember when the Lord went down to Bethany and Martha met him and said, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother would not have died. And then Mary came weeping, fell at his feet, said, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And then he looked at all the mourners weeping. And John eleven thirty five, 35, shortest verse in the Bible, all the kids want to learn that verse for Sunday school. Uh, Jesus wept. And they said, oh, how much he loved him. Look, even he's weeping over him. Jesus said, where have you laid him? They said, we laid him over here. Over here with his stones over this tomb. Jesus said, remove the stone. And then, of course, Martha always had to get her two cents in. Lord, he stinketh by now. He's been there four days. The Lord didn't ask for her opinion. I mean, he'd already asked her. She believed in the resurrection. She says, yeah, I believe in the resurrection. After he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, they... They rolled back the stone. By the way, he didn't put it there. He wasn't rolling it back. Yeah. There's some things you put in your life, and you ask him to take away. He's not going to take them away. Uh, you put them there. Now, he'll give you the help to take it away, but he ain't taking it away. Hmm? Uh, so they opened up the grave. they got to understand, that ain't like our graves. You go over to a cemetery, and there'll be a marker for everybody that's buried there. And uh, they'll dig one about six feet deep, and they'll put a vault in there, and they'll put the casket in there, and put the lid on the vault, and they'll cover it back up. But see, over there in the Holy Land, they didn't have room to do all that. 
So they would open up a tomb and hew out a tomb, and there might be many bodies buried down in there. Huh? Well, they opened up the tomb, and Jesus said this, Come forth. Is that what he said? No. Because if he had said, Come forth, every one of them bodies would have come out of there. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And wrapped up in grave clothes, uh, not under his own power, come forth Lazarus. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Now I'm here to tell you, when the Lord sends the shout, he sends the call, he sends the cry, he sends the summons, uh, it's selective. Not everybody's leaving this world. If he just yells, come forth, uh, we'd all go. Uh, but no, it's a selective call. Uh, he's going to call us all out by name. Are you listening? Uh, hey, we can't get there under our own power. Uh, we're wrapped up in this old flesh uh, and the entanglements of this world. Uh, but under his power, uh, he's calling us out. Uh, and somewhere between here and there, uh, he's going to loose us and let us go. Uh, hey, we'll be different than when we went in. Uh, I'm glad my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, I'm glad he knows me and I know him. Uh, I'm glad I'm in him and he's in me. Uh, and I'll know that voice when he calls. Uh, and I'm going to check it out. Hallelujah. It'll be a disturbance in this whole world. Uh, so much more they'll have to make up a lie. What happened to us? Uh, hey, friend, are you a part of that number? Uh, are you ready for him to come? Uh, Jesus is coming soon. The rapture will be with the deified one, with the descent, with the disturbance. But can I say it will also be with the divulging. Look again, verse 16. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. Can I say... Uh, Trumpets have a very distinct sound. A flute can't be a trumpet. Can I say a clarinet can't be a trumpet? There's just something about a trumpet. Throughout the ages, they've used trumpets on battlefields. And trumpets will always give a sound to the troops, a sound to charge, or a sound to retreat. They'll use trumpets uh, to get the soldiers up in the morning. And they'll play a trumpet to let folks know it's time to lay it down at night. Now listen, uh, there's going to be the sound of a trumpet divulging uh, to God's troops on the battlefield. Uh, and listen, uh, that trump's going to be a proclamation. It's going to be an announcement. Uh, when that trumpet sounds... Uh, that's an announcement. Uh, it's time to lay off our battle gear uh, and time to go home. Uh, the battle be over uh, uh, when that trumpet sounds. Uh, hey, notice over the revelation, he said he heard a voice as it were a trumpet. Uh, here we find a trumpet of God's going to sound. Uh, hallelujah, and you'll know uh, it's time to move over yonder uh, and lay this heavy burden down. Uh, can I say this? trumpet will be pulsating uh, it'll be heard everywhere in the world uh, it'll ripple throughout all time and ages uh, and it'll even reach the dead buried in the ground uh, cause the dead in Christ shall rise first uh, hey, it'll be so pulsating it'll bust, bust open the graves uh, I wouldn't want to be around the graveyard uh, when the Lord comes uh, there'll be tombs busted up all over uh, what a blessing. Uh, it'll be a proclamation. Uh, it'll be pulsating. Uh, but again, friend, it'll be personal. You remember on the road to Damascus, the Apostle Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus then, he was on his way to Damascus with the orders in his hand to persecute, arrest, and even have Christians sentenced to death. But on the road, a great light shone around him. Boy, I'm glad for the glorious light of the gospel. And he heard a voice 
said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest and kickest against the pricks. And the Saul of Tarsus got saved that day, and the Lord changed him. He became the Apostle Paul. And I say, I'm glad Jesus, when he saves us, don't leave us where he found us, but he changes us. But what I want to say is, uh, there were people with the apostle, uh, with Saul of Tarsus that day, uh, and they just heard a noise. He heard a voice. Can I say, when the trumpet sounds, uh, this whole world's just going to hear a noise. But those that know the Lord are going to hear a voice. It's a personal divulging. Huh? You ready to meet him? Do you know him? He's coming soon. If I didn't know him, I'd get to know him. He could come before the invitation of this, uh, this message. Uh, can I say, the rapture will be accompanied with deliverance. Again, in verse 16, it said, And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We'll be delivered from all our fears, all of our faults, all of our failures. Be delivered from this old sin-cursed world. Be delivered from all the things that grieve us. We'll be going to a land, friend, where we'll fit in just fine. Yes, Listen to me now. Not everybody sitting in this building is going to die a physical death. There are some, and I believe many, we're going to be translated. From this world to the glory world. Like Enoch, like Elijah. Elijah didn't die. God sent a chariot of fire and took him on. God is coming for his children. And he's coming soon. Could be everybody in this building might be alive when he comes. Uh, when he comes, he's bringing sweet deliverance to the saved or sorrowful damnation to those that have heard the gospel and rejected it. Say, what is the gospel? Jesus Christ came and he died according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures, seeking to save that which was lost, to pay the sin debt of every man, and those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. You can be saved from your sins, if you'll put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as the only means of your salvation. It's not about joining the church, not about being baptized, not about uh, giving a tithe. All those things are important in their place, but none of that will get you to heaven. The only thing that gets you to heaven is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Now, I've heard people add to it. People, I've heard people say, you've got to receive Jesus in your heart. Show me that. It's not what the Bible says. The Bible says... For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, with the heart believeth unto salvation. But listen, the Bible said, be saved. If thou wilt believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. I've heard people say, well, you've got to pray a certain prayer. Show me that in the Bible. Huh? It's not in the Bible. Huh? Matter of fact, I, I can't even remember last week, let alone what I prayed to God 49 and a half years ago when I got saved. All I know is I hit that altar loss and came up a, a child of God. That's all I know. Uh, only thing I can remember saying when I was wiping the tears and they started flowing was, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can remember my old white-haired granddaddy saying, son, are you satisfied? I had no idea how satisfied I'd be. In lieu of his coming, let me ask you this. Are you saved? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you trusted in Him as the Savior? If you're not saved, I wouldn't wait another day. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Today's the day of salvation. 
You don't know if you have another day to live, and even if you, don't, if you do live, you don't know the Lord could come tonight. Are you saved? I didn't ask you to look to the person to the right of you or left of you or who's in front of you or behind you trying to figure out if they're saved. I'm asking you, are you saved? Do you know that you know that you know your name's recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life? Amen. Are you saved? Say, preacher, I'm saved. Wonderful. Let me ask you this. Are you sold out for Christ? I told my Sunday school class, the problem is, is we get comfortable. We get comfortable being saved, comfortable coming to church. What can I say? Being sold out, he gets you out of your comfort zone so that you'll tell others how to be saved. That's why he left us here, so that we could be his mouthpiece and tell others that Jesus saves, Jesus saves. When was the last time you invited somebody to church? When was the last time you gave somebody a gospel track? When was the last time you told somebody Jesus saves? Are you sold out for Christ? Are you willing to go to places your flesh don't want to go just to tell people about Jesus? Let me ask you this. Luke is coming. Are you saved? Are you sold out for Christ? Are you sharing him with others? Let me ask you this. Are you set? Are you ready to meet him? Hmm? Now, last Sunday afternoon, if you, you know, we got done with service, if you said, would have asked me, are you set to go to St. Lucia? I, said, I would have told you, well, almost. I about had everything packed, but I didn't have everything packed. A lot of people, Colonel, are almost set. But see, he's not going to wait for us to throw things in a suitcase when he comes. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people at his coming are going to be ashamed to meet him. You don't have to be ashamed. Oh, I can't get off of that. Woo. Brother Brian, there are a lot of people who won't even look me in the eye. How are they going to look Jesus in the eye? I didn't die for them. I'm nothing. I'm a zero with the hole knocked out. I'm just the instrument God uses to preach the word. When I preach the word, people can't look at the preacher. Hmm? I don't know how many times I'll be preaching on something, Brother Rod, and somebody say, Who told you? Nobody told me. But you know, the Holy Ghost does see everything. And He does speak to His man every now and then. Huh? If you can't look at the brethren, you can't look at the pastor how are you going to be able to look at Jesus I'd get that thing taken care of today you remember after resurrection Peter didn't want to face the Lord you remember he said I go fishing they're all talking about the Lord and the Lord resurrected and he goes I'm going fishing well they followed him and they're out there didn't catch anything all night by the way when you're not right with the Lord you think he's going to bless you And the Lord appears on the bank. He says, children, have you any meat? Well, of course, John, the only one that was at the cross, John recognizes his voice, the disciple whom Jesus loved. He said, it's the Lord. What did Peter do? Jumped off the boat. Why? He wasn't ready to meet the Lord. Well, by the time they got there, Jesus, like only Jesus can, had a fish fry going, he had a fish fry, and had some bread and fish going. You say, where did the Lord get the fish? He's the Lord, huh? He could have looked at a couple sticks and said, become fish, and they would have came fish. Or he could have looked at the river and said, give me a couple fish, and they would have spit them out. I don't know. He's the Lord. They're sitting around a fire in joint. Can you imagine fish cooked by the Lord? I like fish anyway. I've never had heaven fish. Woo, we will. Huh? Can you imagine heaven fish out of the Crystal River? Oh, Lord have mercy. Sign me up. I'm, I'm down for that meal. Huh? But the Lord's feeding them. The Lord is being good to them. The Lord's speaking with them. And here's old Peter. Everybody's over there. Peter's there like this. The Lord said, Peter. Oh, Peter didn't want to hear that. 
He's like, talk to John. Talk to James. Don't talk to me. Peter. Now, here's what Peter's expecting. He's expecting the Lord to chew him out because he denied him. And Peter said, I'll go all the way. I'll die with you. I ain't going to deny you. He said, you'll deny me thrice before the cock crows. And, of course, Peter did. Peter, oh no, here it comes. He's going to chew me out. Gonna, here it comes on them. I told you so's. He says, do you love me? Oh, that was worse than getting chewed out. <laughs> yes, Lord, feed my sheep. A few minutes go by. Peter, oh. do you love me? Oh. Yes, Lord, feed my lambs. Peter, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. Feed my sheep. The Lord had already forgiven Peter. The Lord was wanting Peter to forgive Peter. And on the day of Pentecost, it was Peter that preached, and 3,000 souls were added to the church. What I'm trying to say is, are you ready? See, some people are afraid he's going to say, your name? And you're like, oh, oh. Friend, he's already forgiven you. He just wants you to forgive yourself and just be what he wants you to be. He's coming soon. Are you ready to meet him? Brother Clint, I was thinking of that old hymn you sing all the time. I wrote the words down to the course. Coming again. Coming again. Maybe morning. Maybe noon. Maybe evening. Maybe soon. Coming again, coming again. Oh, what a wonderful day it will be. Jesus is coming again. He's coming soon. Are you ready to meet him? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song. Are you ready to meet him? You're here today and you're not saved. Why don't you come? Say, so preacher, I don't know how to be saved. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. What saved person, are you ready? Is there anything between you and the Lord? Why don't you get that settled? He's coming soon. We need to be looking for him. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the scriptures. For they testify of you. Lord, this whole world's gone insane and it just points again that you're coming. Lord, the Bible even tells us in Romans 1, even all creation is groaning for your coming. So Lord, I pray that everyone under the sound of our voice is ready to meet you. Lord, I pray especially if there's some here today unsaved, that today... They'll come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. God, those that are saved, I pray you'd disturb us to get out of our comfort zone that we can warn others that you're coming soon. God, now speak the hearts in this invitation. Lord, thank you for all these in the altar. You know the needs. God, speak the hearts. We'll bless you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.